Hi, Levon. How you doing, Daisy? Good. Thank you for granting me this interview this afternoon. You're welcome. Uh, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. Okay. The first question is, people want to know, is Levon Baker really an evil male being? <laughs> God, um, I don't think I am, Daisy. You don't? But I've heard rumors. I don't think I am. I think the people that don't know me perceive me to be that way. But I think they say it because I'm outspoken and I speak my mind. And I think maybe um, if they got to know me, they, they, they wouldn't say that. But I think it's what I think is what you bitch about that proclaim you to be a bitch. If you're saying something that's true, mm -hmm. then you're not bitching. But if you are saying stuff just to keep up a lot of chaos, then that's me bitching. But I, I think uh, the fact that I'm outspoken. And so I'm, why are you so outspoken? Why, why no, is when, that? When because a lot of people, you know, even though they know things are going on, they keep it to themselves and they don't really speak about it. But you do. Why is well, that? Well, I feel that when you're around me, I don't like chaos in my presence, and I'm, I'm a corrector. If something's going on around me that I don't particularly like, I feel like I should say something. And, it, and then I think if a person is not open for correction, especially if you're doing something you feel that you're, you're right about it and you really aren't, then you will, you will shift the blame on somebody else, and you shouldn't do that. I, I think that humility is very important. And as long as you can blame somebody else, you never grow. So, I, and then the fact that I, I just, I don't like stuff around me that isn't right. I like things ordered around me. I'm an ordinary person. Am I asking you a question? I think so. Okay. Let me ask you this. Okay. Do you believe in forgive and forget? To a certain extent. I, I do believe in forgiving you, but I don't believe that I have to have anything to do with you. And I think that's... So you would forgive me, but you would never forget? It, um, I will, but I will forget you with what I will forgive you, and I will forget you. So, if something happened, you wouldn't. It depends on what you did. There are some things I think that uh, you can forgive, but I still think you should. I don't think I should. I don't think that um, I have to have anything to do with you. And I think that because I decide to turn you loose doesn't mean that I'm walking in unforgiveness. I just realize you're no good for me. And there are some people that are not good for you. And I think that when you realize, and I think another thing two days, I think a lot of us are afraid to be alone. Right. So That's we true. put up with stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I am the only man child of the four children my mother had. So I used to have had my own room. Right. I live alone. I pay my own bills. I'm very independent. So I don't, I don't, I don't have to have you. So you don't have to have someone else in your no. life to for you to be happy. Yeah, a lot of people do. Yourself happy. Yeah, a lot of women are, are being. Physically, emotionally abused by their husband, right. <laughs> but they keep forgiving because they don't want to be alone. Right. So, but I'm not afraid to be alone. So, no, I don't. I, I can forgive you and turn you loose too. And I don't believe that God wants me to be in a relationship that isn't healthy for me. So, yes, I think me forgiving you, then me releasing you, it depends on what you did. Right. And let them know. Yeah, because a lot of times people they don't forgive people. And they're holding like a grudge inside, but the other person don't know. I've been accused know. of that. Yeah. Other people don't know that you have that grudge against them. So when someone is doing something. I think, let me say, I think that's a mentally reverse psychology thing that people can tend to play on you if you don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. Because usually, most people, rarely people come back and apologize for what they've done. Right. They figure, you know, it's washed under the blood, or you should forgive me. But the Bible does say that if you offend your brother, go to them. People don't want, they excuse that. Right. So that alone lets me know where your Christian walk is with God. Mm -hmm. You haven't came to me and get it right, so what's to make me think you wouldn't do it again? Because you haven't gave back to apologize. Right. So, you so sometimes people think they don't need to apologize, that you would just... You know, forgive them you, just because you better, they are. You better as you go crazy. Because <laughs> they ain't not going to tell you they that's saw it. They ain't gonna, you know that. <laughs> yeah. Right or wrong. Yeah, you're right. Okay. You're right. So you better say, okay, I'm gonna, but I'm going to forgive you and let you go too. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so now let me ask you this because okay, you're okay. 50, but you look like you're 35. You think so. I really do? <laughs> yeah, what, what, what's, what's the secret? What's your secret for looking so young? Um, Honestly, um, I've had, I really have had a lot of people asking that days. And I am 50, 
and I've never drank and smoked. I think, and my, I'm now that I'm 50, I really guard my immune system and what I let come into my into my body. I never drank, I never smoked. Um, I never have took anything inside of me that I felt would damage my body. Um, I, and this is one of the main, this sounds very bizarre, but I'm being honest with you, stress. Negative power would de de decay you quick, quick. Yes. And that's one reason why I don't deal with a lot of stuff. I, I release you, you got to go. Mm -hmm. Because I realize you're pulling at me. And then number, number, and one of the main, like I said earlier, um, I have a daily meditation I do. I get up and I spend a lot of time. I'm very careful. And I'm telling you, this is the key to looking good. Okay. I don't let negative power come into my world. I don't let it come through the television. I don't let it come on the radio. Certain music I won't play. Right. Um, I won't do it. And and this and then that's the inner coming into my inner. Now the outer. One thing I do do is that you ever you remember the original magazine? Mm -hmm. Every morning because I have a bald head. Don't laugh. I, for years I I have oily skin. I yeah. put it all over my face and on my head, and I let it sit for like fifteen minutes. Okay. And I, it pulls the oil out of my skin. I shower my body, and I put pure cocoa butter all over my body. Okay. And I think, and men need to, men need to be aware that a lot of this stuff isn't just for women. Right. We need to start loving ourselves. Right. So I think that, I think above those outer things, but the, the major thing I feel is that releasing negative power. Don't allow any right. negative energy coming to your world. Because okay. I, I tell people this, and remember this, Daisy. People come into your world for one or two things: right. either they add to you or to take away. Right. If they're all, if you're always giving, and they have, they don't have. Oh, you look good today. Mm -hmm. You need to be letting them go. <laughs> you need to be turning right. them loose because right. you. It's not it, relationships are give and take. Okay. Give and take. Now, just to change it a little bit, let me ask you this: Did Reverend James Cleveland really die from AIDS? Whoa. I have, There's rumors out yeah, there, and yeah. I just wondered if. Well, you know. a lot of people ask him that because he, first of all, he made records for my aunt in the mm -hmm. He was the one who, not discovered, but my aunt, my aunt took care of in '53. Reverend James Cleveland, I met him like four times in my life. The first three times I was with my aunt. Mm -hmm. The last time I saw him, he was at Bishop G. Palestine, so like in May of 1985. And I passed, he was, I was in the choir stand behind GE, mm -hmm. and he came and sat in the pulpit, and he was like right down in front of me. And I passed the note to him and said, hello, Uncle James, I'm sitting behind you. He looked at you, there for us, you know. And after service, um, I went up to him, and I hugged him, and me and some of my friends were there, they wanted to meet him, because they knew I knew him. Right. And I said, Uncle James, where are you going? He said, well, nephew, I got to go. We're leaving out of here in the morning. He said, because I'm tired. We got to go to this next city. I said, okay. I said, well, we going out. He said, well, he, he counted out me five $20 bills. Wow. That <laughs> was so, nice. Yeah, it's all right? us to go out and get something. So y'all go. I got something else to no, do. No, no. He was like, well, I can't go, nephew. I, You know, mm -hmm. hold on. He said, I can't go, nephew, because we could say, here's some money. And you guys go get something to eat. And I said, thank you. My friends like, oh, you got a rich talk over that. <laughs> we started laughing. But I wanted to say also about him is that um, it reminds me, um, I never, but I'm about to say I never said this. It reminds me of when I met, uh, you ever remember Gary Coleman? Mm -hmm. um, I met him about 15 years ago. And I was out with some friends, and um, he was at this place where we met. And um, he he was very drunk. He was very, very. I'm just, I want to deal with the rumors because what they're saying about James Cleveland is uh, really, to me, is wrong. So I want to say something about this situation with Gary Coleman because he was drunk, and. Um, His friends wouldn't take him home. Come to find out, when I was really surprised, like, wow, Gary Coleman. Right. Yeah, you know, right. wow, you know. Star. And he was like, hey, he said, what should I say? I'm wrong stuff. You know, and, and, and he was in a very low point in his life. So um, 
we talked and he asked me to get him home. Luckily, he stayed around the corner from where we was. Yeah. And when I got there, it didn't look like the type of place he should be. He was in a room. And didn't he die? I think he died broke or something. Yeah. Yeah. He was in a rooming house. And when I got in there, he was, Daisy was very depressed. Really, really, really depressed. And he was really, and he grabbed me and he kissed me. And I pushed him back. Yeah. And he, 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 I said, no, what's wrong? What's, you know, he said, I, I need you to be with me. I'm like, What's what's wrong here? Talk to me. You know, right. he's like, he said, Lebron, I thank you for getting me home. He said, but I, I really need you. I need something right now. I need, need to be. I said, I, I, and I grabbed his hands, like, talk to me. Was, let me into you. Let I can help you. Right. And he said, well, if you can't be with me, I need you to leave. And I said, okay. And I left. I went back to the club where he was, where we were. And one of the guys that knew him, I um, told him, look, I'm really worried about this guy. I said, I just met him, but they wouldn't take him home, Daisy. I don't know what was going on in his world, they wouldn't take him home. So when I went back and talked to the guys, I said, look, um, I'm worried about him. Can you please take my number and call me and let me know how he's doing, right. you know? And I left the number with the guys I never heard nothing from, but seven years later he died. Right. I was really, and I said that to say that although he did what he did at that moment, that doesn't define who he is. No, he, and then, he could have been lonely. Yes. And yes. a lot of times people, even though he was a movie star, and things happened in his life where he lost his money or what have yeah. you. Yeah. You know, he and was I, lonely, he needed someone. And I want to say that about James Cleveland. The rumors <coughs> that I'm, he has a daughter. And I met her last year at the High Regis when she was here for the uh, workshop convention. And we're friends on Facebook. And I want to ask, how, how are you taking this stuff they're saying about your dad? And I also want to say, um, he he couldn't be all the way gay because he has a daughter. <laughs> so I don't know, where, where are these rumors? You know, how can you just take one person? Maybe one person asked him to borrow money. And he said no to them. Mm -hmm. So then they start rumors. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's yeah. how rumors yeah. get started because what the one person does something that you don't like, so then you start rumors. It is hurtful because I had access to him because he recorded with my aunt and he knew her. Right. Knew her and he never came off to me that way. So and and when people ask me I'm like, well, and I think it also has a big part in how you carry yourself. Right. If you if he if he was this way, which I don't know. Right. He never showed. The four times I saw him, he embraced me as a little nephew. Right. And probably because I carried myself like a gentleman. But if you if, if you're flaunting yourself in front of right. a man who you think is supposedly gay right. to get in the gospel industry, because right. he really helped a lot of young men get in the industry. And from my with these rumors I'm hearing come from guys who say he helped them. Right. But I'm I'm wondering your motive from even attaching yourself to him in the first place. Right. But to answer your question once again, no, I don't know that to be true. I don't care what nobody's saying. I can only tell you what what I know of him. Right. And I don't know that to be okay. true. So what about Andre Crouch? Do you think he was gay? Woo! <laughs> you get deep here. <laughs> um I met Andre Crouch in 1986. Matter of fact, there's a program. Uh, can you hand me this program here, this red program? Here. Yeah. I met Andre Crouch. If you look at this, I didn't have that that long. You see his name on yeah. there? And name the people of some program there. Can you name some of them? Yeah, there's Sandra Crouch. Abertine Walker. Uh-huh. Inez Andrews. Yes. Shirley Caesar. Yes. Dorothy Nor Norwood. Okay. Cassetta George. Okay. Dolores Washington Green. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So this, when was this? What year was this? 1986. Yeah. I met Andre Crouch in 1986 at the South Shore Country Club. And um, he was sitting like 
right where my, you know, like where this cameraman is, uh -huh. <laughs> like nowhere from us, you know. Right. And I, he kept looking at me, but I didn't know who he was because I didn't have a program. I noticed this man was looking. I looked up, and I, I said, "Wow, Andre Crouch." Right. And my aunt, she had her back turned to me. You hear me? She was giving somebody an autograph. Right. And we were sitting in this conference room waiting to march out. So when I said, "Wow, Andre Crouch," she turned around and she looked at him, and she gave him some eye contact, and she looked at me, "So don't you go over there." So I'm like, okay, and I let it go. Right. So I, I can't really say that I know that he's gay. And, and I never asked her. Mm -hmm. And reason why is because I felt within myself that one thing you have to learn that I had to learn the hard way is that the Bible tells you under thy mother, thy father, right. that thy days will be longer. Mm -hmm. And I had, I believe in my heart, she had her reasons. Right. There were reasons. Right. I don't know what they were. Right. And I didn't ask her. Yeah. I didn't move because I knew that my aunt loved me. Right. And whatever, whatever was going on. You see, people have asked me, though, well, you know, they saying James, because these are two legends. Right. Legendary men who have rumors. And I, I met both of them. Yeah. He was like, nowhere from me, you know. Right. And, but I didn't move. Because she said, don't she move. Don't move. <laughs> and, and where, yeah, uh, I would have been walking back to Memphis from Chicago. And I, <laughs> I told you don't move. <laughs> okay. And see, and that's another thing, too, because when you, you have to believe that if you're trusting, if you, if you trust, like, for example, if we're out and I say, hey, Daisy, watch this. Right. Why would you override me? That means right. you don't trust me. Right. There shouldn't be a reason. Right. Yeah, so that's all I, I don't know if he was gay. And I want to say this also, if he was gay and I <coughs> and we were friends, I don't think I would reveal it. Because I think that's another misconception. People think I'm just because I attacked yeah, you. Because you're you're a male bitch. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think they're saying that really because I attacked Shirley C and Albertina Walker. Because they deserved it. Oh. Okay. They deserve well, it. I got some got questions it. about that. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but Andre Crouch, I don't know if I would really reveal it because I don't think it's honestly and true that I'll last. It's not my place. Right. I, I think, I think, once again, back to James and, and uh, Gary, what a person does at that moment doesn't define who they are. Right. And people have lived so many years before they met you. I don't know what it is about that sin because it's all, it's just a sin. That people. It's a spirit. Yes, it's and it, spirit. It, it really, it really is irritating that everybody, that, that people can just put a stamp on you and right. say this is you, right? And that's it, you know. And I think only, only that person themselves can, only he can answer that, right? For, for he's gone now, and only he, can, only Uncle James can answer that, only Andre, and even Gary. Uh, I didn't get a call from his friend. And next day I know he died. And it grieved me right. inside of me because, but then I I told myself, I tr God, I tried. You did. And you I did. think if he would have opened the door, maybe he would have realized. But his friends, that wouldn't even take him home. They wouldn't. And that's amazing. I didn't know what he was going, but it was amazing with him being who he was at that point, low point in his life. That he couldn't find nobody that no friends. Yeah, he had no friends. Yeah. they said they were his friends, yeah. but they weren't. And they didn't. Look, they didn't. I mean, before he passed, I said, "Can you please? I'm really worried about him. Can you please call me? Right, and let me know." Mm. They were not his friends. I didn't get a call. Yeah. They were not his friends. I didn't get a call. Now, let me ask you this: Do you feel that upcoming male, uh, black male gospel artists are using James and Andre? Of lifestyle to say it's okay to be gay? I think they are. I think based upon the fact that they were legends. They feel like they Yeah, can. yeah. James Stephen has a star on the walk of fame. There's not a gospel. I think Mahalia has one too. I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I think she does. Them about the only two gospel artists who have a star on the walk of fame. And I think maybe because they had these big successful careers mm -hmm. and who don't know them. The right. R&B world knows them, right. and the gospel world. 
that's the kind of career they want. And the fact that they quote were rumored, half of them probably don't even know that they were, but it sounds good. And the fact that they felt like maybe they could sing gospel and live that life. Well, it happened for them. I can do it too. Right. But I don't. I don't. I think. I think that that's a poor reason to do it. That you should. They're using someone else to yeah, do it. Yeah, that if, that if it's really a sin. The reason why I say if is because we're living in a time where people are saying that it's, that it is, that it's okay to be. So I want to say it this way, that if it really is a sin and you know it's one, then why don't you strive to be better? Right. Say they had a big career, but I'm going to live when I sing them out. If right. I'm and teaching, something yeah, different. yeah, if I'm teaching this is wrong, then maybe I should, I'm going to live a better, better life right. than what I'm living. Yeah, so I think they are hiding behind the rumors. I don't think I don't think have I've been, I've been very fortunate. I met Mahalia when I was six. I mean, I, I've been to Andre Crouch presidents, James Cleveland, all the caravans. Right. So I, I've been around the gods. Right. <laughs> so right. and it, you know, and being around them, I absorbed their negative energy and their power and, and turned them into positive. 